So I played Deathloop and I was kind of shocked by how much I love this game. I mean, I like Dishonored, I liked Prey, it is an arcane game, but I didn't expect it to be in the running for my game of the year 2021. Heads up, I tried to keep this video mostly spoiler free, but if you want to go in completely blind, I would just listen instead of watch. And big thanks to Bethesda for sending me a code. It's hard to describe Deathloop when the people who made the game don't want to call it a roguelite, but I mean, it's absolutely a roguelite to me. You play through the same levels, bring some gear in between runs, and you progress and learn more as you play. But what makes Deathloop particularly special to me is how it bakes the story, really the entire concept for this game into those mechanics. Everything is wrapped in this neatly polished package that feels original, charming, and most important of all, it doesn't get repetitive. I've been loving Rogues lately. I'm still playing Hades, and the other time loop PlayStation exclusive Returnal is one of my favorites of the year so far. Some of the best ways these games keep me playing is by drip feeding story content, giving me small nuggets of insight to keep things interesting. But Deathloop does that better than both of those games to me. Every time I play, I get another piece to this huge puzzle that's not just lore, it's central to the story. It's important for the main mission. So I'm not doing things like farming for resources or trying to get some kind of god roll on an item. Each run feels uniquely special and important in Deathloop. And maybe that's why Arcane doesn't want to call this a roguelite. While the random loot is fun, it's part of the experience, the magic here is in uncovering the very not random world and story that they chose to tell. Part of that is the discoveries that you make in these levels. Deathloop is split into four different regions, the Complex, Updom, Freestad Rock, and Carl's Bay. It's also split into four different times of day, morning, noon, afternoon, and evening. What happens in these areas changes depending on the time that you visit them. Some targets and opportunities only appear at certain times of the day. And just like real life, if something happens earlier in the day, it's going to affect what happens later in the day. So combine all of this and and Black Reef turns into this time loop playground where you can explore these levels, discover new information to help you break the loop, and manipulate situations to see the cause and effect. This is what I mean when I say it does it better than other loop games. There's such a powerful connection between what you're doing and why you're doing it. One part of the Dishonored games that never hooked me as much as I thought it should is the exploration. Arcane makes these huge, dense levels, but I was never motivated to go off the main path and really soak in the world and everything they made for me to find. Deathloop solves that for me by making discovery a core part of the experience. You're going to these places, these times of day, and you're finding clues. Instead of relying on intrinsic motivation to get me to explore, to find notes, to you know find all these interesting routes, discovery is the experience. As Colt trying to break out of this loop nightmare, I need to scour these levels and investigate every opportunity. It's like a high stakes scavenger hunt that doesn't get boring and lasts for like 20 hours. Now, it's not perfect. In order to advance the story, sometimes you have to find one specific clue or note. Twice when I killed a target, I felt like I found all of the information that was there, so I moved on. And then only after leaving the area did I realize that I missed the one clue I needed. So that forced me to reset the day, go back to that location, kill the target again, and then find the photograph or the tape recorder that I needed. I guess that's on me for missing it, of course, but at the same time, I wish the game stopped me and told me like, hey, don't leave yet. You missed the one thing that you were looking for. It only happened to me twice, but yeah, it was enough for me to notice and share with you guys. The other thing Deathloop managed to get me to do is be creative. The Dishonored games are celebrated for being these immersive sims that give you all the freedom and tons of interesting tools to play around with. But again, I can't say that I ever did that. For one reason or another, I wasn't creative. I usually went in stealthy and blinked everywhere. Deathloop, on the other hand, got me to try every single combination of powers and guns. I think it's due to the way Arcane makes levels. There's such an emphasis on letting you, the player, solve the problems. I can't say that it's much better or different than Dishonored or Prey, but 
I do feel like revisiting every level multiple times in Deathloop is what got me to explore all the possibilities. I wanted to try being completely stealthy versus completely aggressive because I was going to do everything multiple times anyways. And if I spotted a ledge that I could reach only if I had a trinket or the shift power, I remembered that and brought it with me the next time. Every time I completely explored a level, I discovered a route that I didn't know existed, and that completely changed my knowledge of the level. So by the end, I felt like I knew these worlds like the back of my hand, like I could navigate these without looking at a map, and it just felt so satisfying. In a way, the repetition of this game brings out the magic in the arcane formula. If that's what I really needed to fall in love with the world, then it absolutely worked. And all the while, you're being hunted by an assassin named Juliana. Well, not the whole time. She only hunts you down if one of Colt's targets is in the area that you enter. So that gives you some nice time to breathe if you just want to explore without being hunted. Whenever a single player game has multiplayer elements, people immediately like cringe. I saw a lot of skepticism for this before launch, but I ended up really liking this. I played most of my game in online mode, which means other real players invaded my game to try and kill me. Now you can switch the game to single player mode, which doesn't prevent Juliana from invading, but she's controlled by an AI instead. Obviously the behavior is completely different. She's a lot more subtle when she's controlled by the AI, but definitely easier to kill than a human. But overall, I really liked this part of the game, this feature, because it introduces a completely unique idea to the loop genre. We have not seen this before. And every time the game told me I was being invaded, I went into hunting mode as Colt. The game actually locks your exits. So what you have to do is go and hack an antenna and and then either kill Juliana or get out of there. But you're kind of forced to make a trade-off here because if you get out of there, then you're not able to explore or do whatever you wanted to do in that specific area at that time of day. But when I decided to kill her, man, like I started switching my loadout when I knew I was going to be invaded and the rewards you get for taking her out were usually awesome. Like I got some amazing power upgrades and even got some slabs before I was supposed to. So. It almost made sense to lean into this part of the game if you're able to kill the Juliana that invades you. This also works to sort of break up the monotony of a time loop or a roguelite sort of game. At least it did for me. The fact that I wasn't seeing Juliana every time and the fact that I could switch her between AI and a human controlled, you know, version. Yeah, it just introduces a lot of variability. Speaking of combat, there's plenty of shooting in this game if you want it. I had a ton of fun creating my loadout each time, mixing and matching trinkets, deciding which items to bring with me in future loops. And I usually don't like that part of a game. You know, the preparation phase where you're buried in a menu making decisions that don't end up mattering as much as you think they will. But man, Deathloop scratched that itch for me. I felt like I was making interesting trade-offs and crafting a kit specifically for the run I was planning to do. By the end of the game though, I realized I wish that shooting felt better. I mean, the adaptive triggers, that stuff is very cool. I'm all for the PS5 gimmicks because I think they're fun and feel great. But yeah, Arcane has a very specific style of movement and aiming. And at times it can feel a little stiff. I'm by no means the best FPS controller player in the world, but I'd say I'm better than average and this just could have felt smoother. But when I step back, this feels like a conscious decision. I don't think Arcane wanted this to handle like, you know, any bargain bin FPS free to play game out there. But at times I kind of felt that it should have. I wish that it did, especially when I got killed by Juliana because I felt like I couldn't aim at her properly. However, I loved the powers in this game. Instead of hiding them away in a skill tree, like thank God they did not do that. You have to hunt down the target to collect their slab, which gives you the power. So not only is it more interesting to get these powers, but there's a limited roster of them, but they all feel so like good. By the end, I definitely found my favorites in Shift and Aether, but I really did use every single power for specific reasons. Havoc is perfect for an aggressive run if you just want to shoot everything. Carnesis is also great for that, but it's just fun to use. I mean, tell me this is not fun to do. Nexus is incredible for clearing groups of enemies. I would pair this when I wanted to be more stealthy just to take out enemies more quickly and easily. Again, I was worried when I found out that Colt only had, you know, five powers, technically six, but one of them you can't change. 
But the upgrades add so much nuance to how these powers work that I'm glad they didn't add any like useless powers. For example, I felt like a god when I found the ether upgrade that doesn't drain power if you don't move. So you can just sit there and like scan and observe your environment. I ended up combining that with shift and became this invisible teleporting like monster. There was nothing that could stop me. And I also used it against Juliana, which felt almost like cheating, even though she can use it too. But yeah, it felt incredible. One thing I've always appreciated about arcane games is the aesthetic. Deathloop is another brilliant, aesthetically pleasing video game. I'm talking art style, stuff like the fonts, the menus, the color palette. It just oozes creativity and it's lockstep with the vision that they chose. I always struggle to kind of put this into words, but I love when a game feels and looks sleek, you know, it's it's stylish. I love when a game has a personality visually. That's exactly what Deathloop does for me with this 40s, 50s, 60s style that at times feels retro futuristic and others anachronistic. But hey, that sort of ambiguity makes perfect sense with this narrative. So. Yeah, I just love a good looking game and that's Deathloop. Same thing goes with like the music cues in the theme. This is something I usually don't notice, but with a time loop game, it makes perfect sense because every time you escape, you get this little cue. You hear this little musical jingle that they made. In Carl's Bay, there's always this guy jamming on a guitar. Every single time I entered that region and got close, I heard this guy. Again, with the gimmicks, I even noticed every time you tag an enemy, you get a controller speaker cue. It's like a little ding noise. And that too, like just every single little detail I noticed with sound. And that's something I never, ever noticed. They did such a good job. All right, let's talk about this story. So without ruining it for you, I'll say story is a big reason I had such a good time with this game. Colt, Juliana, really all the main characters, the targets are so well written and so well performed that you can't help but fall for them. It's also a genuinely funny video game. It's very self-aware, which personally I like. Compared to something like Returnal, which at times lost me because it felt overly serious, Deathloop's humor gives it a certain charm that I don't know if I've ever seen in a video game. Who, who am I? My name, my name, son of a What the is my name? In the first five minutes, I swear Colt drops more F-bombs than a Quentin Tarantino flick. When you first start the loops, Colt sees these mysterious messages writing throughout the world. And just like me, he's like, what the hell is this, you know? Of course, it's a convenient excuse to have the main character forget the past in order to put us, the player, in the same shoes exploring this world for the first time. But these little notes, they help Colt begin to remember. It doesn't feel like an excuse. It feels like a very specific decision. Using the Hakama jig to talk to Juliana is a really compelling way for these two to interact. She chimes in at the start of every loop and remarks on things you found, or just adds a random tidbit that teaches you more about the relationship between these two characters. Like I said before, I'm totally a sucker for PS5 gimmicks, but she talks through the controller speaker that you're holding, like a radio, and Colt's holding a radio. So yeah, just like the connection between that felt awesome. As for the targets, it was so fun to get to learn all of their idiosyncrasies. If I gave you any specifics, it would feel like spoiling, but I felt like I had to know these people. I had to see what makes them tick in order to beat this game. Again, discovery is the experience. And hey, that would have fallen flat if not for Arcane's ability to make interesting characters. We were told before this game came out that breaking the loop, finding the golden loop was not going to be easy. That it would be some kind of complicated web of outcomes that we'd have to solve and then pulling it off in and of itself would be a challenge. I know difficulty is subjective, but to me, Deathloop felt more like solving a puzzle rather than something that required like much finesse or critical thinking. Part of that is because the game does such a good job of showing you how the loops work and making sure that if you want to solve the loop, you know where to go next. So you're not just wondering and hunting around for the next clue. But yeah, I'll say part of me was a smidge disappointed by how easy the golden loop felt. I'll also say I was a tad disappointed with the ending. It was one of those endings where the credits rolled and I was like, wait, what? It's not that it was overly complicated or vague, but 
I just wasn't expecting it. And I think I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to spoil you guys. Even after you solve the golden loop, there's plenty to experiment with and even some side content within the loop. There are things that I didn't do that I could go back and do more and I plan to do that. I've seen some people say there's not a ton of replay value with this game, but I actually disagree. I think with Juliana hunting Colt, you can squeeze a lot more time out of this game playing as either character. The only thing I haven't tried in Deathloop is protecting the loop with Juliana. That's something I might do soon. I might actually stream it. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know in the comments. But yeah, I fired up the intro to this mode and there's a lot of progression. Honestly, there's tons of time to be spent here if you're looking for more replay value from the PvP side of this game. I'm far from the first person to say this, but to me, Deathloop is Arcane's best game. It sucked me in so much that I ended up doing marathon play sessions in a way that I rarely do for any other game because I just wanted to see what happened next. The powers, the characters, the loop mechanics, everything gels so well in this game. It feels like a supremely refined game from a studio that I quite enjoy a lot. And for that reason, this is definitely on my shortlist for game of the year. And that is all for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I would have had my review out at Embargo, but I got my code so close to release that it just wasn't going to happen. So I hope you guys were still able to enjoy a few days late. I've actually felt like streaming, so I may go live and do some of the Juliana runs. Let me know if that's something you guys would like to watch in the comments below. If you enjoy the video, please just take a second to click the like button. And if you're not already subbed, you can subscribe so you don't miss my next one. You can also hit that bell so you have a chance of getting notified by YouTube whenever I upload my next video. But the best way to know is to follow me on social media, on Twitter, or to join our community Discord server. Lots of great people over there, and we're talking pretty much every single day about video games. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you next time.